So good evening, everyone, and thanks for being here. I, I do really, really appreciate it. I didn't expect to be doing a class tonight. As a matter of fact, um, tonight was uh, Rick was supposed to be doing the class. And if you guys haven't heard, um, Rick is in the hospital um, with his chemo treatments. His immune system is, is pretty compromised, and he ended up catching a cold. And the fever was getting the best of him, so they put him in the hospital. Probably going to be there for a couple of days um, at least. Um, I'll let you guys know. I'll keep you in touch with what's happening. Poor guy is not feeling too good. So <clears throat> I originally thought, well, what I would do was just do a, um, a market review type um, class tonight. And those are, you know, kind of boring, I guess. Um, I mean, we can, uh, you know, you can liven them up and things like that. But I thought, I wish I could think of something else. And during the live session in Right Way Options today, I someone inspired me to talk about moving averages. And I started talking about them. And, and they said they would really appreciate this if it was formalized into a, an e-learning session and recorded. So there you go. I can't tell you who it was that asked for that. But here you are. Um, thanks for making that request. <clears throat> now, a lot of you are probably going to think, all right, moving averages, that's pretty elementary, and it really is. Um, uh, the moving average is obviously one of the most common indicators out there. But I had kind of a unique experience in learning um, about moving averages <clears throat> in a different way from a fellow by the name of David Elliott. Do you guys ever... Some of you know David Elliott or knew him. <clears throat> David passed away um, several years ago. And he was, <clears throat> well, he really was a brilliant um, technician. But he had a unique way of looking at different, different things. And he had a unique way of describing different things. <clears throat> and the discussion of moving averages kind of brought me to that today. So I wanted to spend some time talking about that because a lot of times we use moving averages, we're looking for crossovers, we're looking for this and that um, in the moving averages, but what, what are the patterns really showing us? What do they really mean overall? And a lot of folks don't realize that moving averages do repeat um, or have reoccurring patterns that repeat themselves over and over and over. So I'm going to give you just kind of the the basics here and I'm going to I'm going to use just a dark screen here um, just for a second to describe what I want to talk about. Um, moving averages are obviously um, calculated in a lot of a lot of different ways. There are simple moving averages, there are exponential, there's front-weighted moving averages. What we're going to talk about here mostly is just the simple moving averages and exponential moving averages. But from those, you can drive an awful lot of information if you focus in closely on what's going on. And David Ellett had this, he had these patterns that he would call um, moving average patterns. And so I'm going to describe that here. If we have a 50-day moving average, on the chart and give me a second I gotta change colors and a 200 day moving average on the chart <clears throat> he would <clears throat> often describe these moving average patterns by the way he called them map patterns MAP okay map patterns and I had never really looked at moving average patterns the way he described them and I actually learned an awful lot from him in uh, just paying attention to these moving average patterns and then I kept studying that with different moving averages different time frames things like that and found that they hold true no matter what time frame no matter what chart you're looking at so first let me give you some of the basics here we're looking at price action and price, you know, stock price has been moving up and doing what it needs to do. And then all of a sudden we have a problem here 
and the stock falls below the 50-day moving average. Now David's um, pattern that he talks about up here was actually called an ice hole failure. We in the room call it the blue ice failure. And the whole premise behind this is we're moving along the ice here. And most people have their moving averages colored blue. It's kind of, <clears throat> I don't want to say it's a universal thing, but it, uh, most people have blue moving averages for the 50-day moving average. And his description was the price falls through a hole in the ice. And it struggles and fights and climbs and does everything it can to rally up to test resistance of that 50-day moving average. And it tries to get through. But oftentimes in that struggle and fight, the current has actually moved you down the river here. The hole is back here. And all that struggle and fight to get back up here you merely bump your head on the underneath side of the ice and then drown, sink to the bottom. Okay, <clears throat> and that was his description of the ice hole failure, what we call the blue ice failure pattern. But he went on to describe that this pattern flows through all the different moving averages that you might use in a chart. And what, what he would typically say is if you fail at the 50-day moving average, your target now is the 200-day moving average for that price action. Now, rarely does a stock just go straight to the 200. It can, but it doesn't do that all the time or very often. What it'll do is it'll move down, it'll bounce around, but you will be surprised at how many times when we create this failure pattern here that the 200-day moving average is tagged eventually in that move down. In fact, he went on even further, and we used to discuss a 500-day moving average, and we kind of um, identified that as when the market had massive sell-offs, really big corrections in the market, we would fail in the same way, we would fail that 200-day that, uh, moving average and uh, with a pink ice, failure, we'd break down through, rally back to test that resistance, and then we would eventually make our way to the 500-day moving average. And that tended to be, that 500-day moving average, tended to be the, um, the, final, the final breakdown of a severe correction in the market. And you could kind of count on um, things getting better from that point, okay? Now, this same pattern is reversed when we look at the rounded bottom breakout. If we take a rounded bottom breakout and we put the 200-day moving average up here, and we put our 50-day moving average, sorry, it takes me a little minute or two to um, get the colors changed, that 50-day moving average, we're basically doing the same thing here, just in reverse. Price has been moving down underneath that 50-day moving average, and we get kind of oversold. We bounce around in here, build some kind of a bottom, and then finally break back above that 50-day moving average. Okay, We hold that 50-day moving average as support, and then we eventually make our way up to the 200-day moving average, and that is the rounded bottom breakout. Okay, so it's just a reverse of the blue ice failure. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. And David um, described all of these different patterns in that very simple form. And if, if you really start breaking down these patterns, you'll see that every chart, every time frame, these patterns work out in that same way. Now, we've kind of taken that in a different way. Um, um, we've created um, this uh, very simple chart that we use, the three line moving average chart. Okay, and 
I want you to understand you can use these patterns together in combination on any time frame chart. Okay, it doesn't have to be the 50 day moving average. On this one, I'm using the 34 exponential, the 8 exponential, and the 3 exponential. Okay, and all we're doing is we're looking for those price patterns that tend to repeat themselves over and over and over again. Okay, now moving averages also have an aspect to them that I call amplitude. If you were to study a sine wave, sine waves um, are just simply like a, a radio wave. They, they move up, they move below a zero line, they move up, they move below a zero line. But those sine waves, depending on the amplitude, tells you what kind of strength and, and things of, um, of that radio wave or whatever light wave or whatever it is. Well, moving averages have that same kind of aspect. Okay, when we see a moving average separate itself a long ways from other moving averages, we have a condition set up that can be overbought or oversold. Okay, because what has to happen is these shorter term averages always have to come back. They have to come back and check in. They have to test these larger averages. And it's really that ebb and flow in the market that creates that. Remember, stocks move up because there's more buyers than sellers. Stocks move down because there's more sellers than buyers. And that's really all there is to it. But when we get those emotional periods of the market where the market gets exceptionally bullish or exceptionally bearish, we have clues develop in these moving averages. Okay? Now, David would always take a short period. He'd use a short period stochastics, a short period RSI, short period money stream, all these kind of things. And he would look for these what he called flats, or hockey sticks okay and it was always on those short period moving averages that those flats get created and he described it this way if you have a hockey stick in the air you get penalized okay get sent back to the penalty box and the stock pulls back if you see that hockey stick on the ice, down here where we have that little flat where we turn, hockey stick on the ice, we have an opportunity to score. Hockey stick in the air, right here, we get sent to the penalty box. Hockey stick on the ice, we have an opportunity to score. Okay, and I'm just showing you the diamonds chart here. So those short-term moving averages gave us patterns and those patterns were readable in a very simple chart. It wasn't that difficult to find them. And you can, you can create those kind of flats even in very, very short you know, indicators. Like I say, a short period RSI, a short period TSV, uh, time segment of volume, a short period uh, money stream or... Um, stochastics will do the same. You get those little flats that show up and provide those clues to potential moves. Okay. Now I talked about amplitude there for a second and amplitude is another clue to a change. When we start seeing a short-term moving average separate this far from an 8 exponential moving average we're a little bit overbought. We've stretched too far. We got a little bit of emotion going there. The momentum carried us a little bit too high. Consequently, profit takers come in and we get sent to the penalty box, hockey stick in the air. And you can see the same thing when we get that amplitude change 
between the eight and the 34, or you can eight the eight or the three and the eight. We get this really wide separation. And then we get that reverse move coming in. Profit taking, profit taking, buying, profit taking, buying, profit taking, buying. Okay. And that process repeats itself over and over and over. Now, I talk about how important it is to me. And in fact, I'm so, I'm so hardcore on this that sometimes I, I jump on, I jump on trades and say, why in the world would you take this? Because I'm so hardcore to these patterns. I, I am so, so much a believer in these patterns that I am only interested in going along a stock when these patterns, these positive patterns begin to develop. Meaning our short term moving averages get lined up like they're supposed to be. Three should be above the eight. Eight should be above the 34. If we're looking at a downtrend, three should be below the eight. Eight should be below the 34. And until that condition exists, I'm not interested in a trade. So for example, when folks are, and this is something I used to do all the time, try to pick or time a bottom, I'm not interested in that. Not even close to interested in that anymore. Because I know this pattern is so accurate over and over and over that we could just rally back up and fail here again. So I hold to these patterns really strong. And that's one of the reasons why you guys will hear me say, if a stock price has been up here floating around and fails through a support level, the only way I'm going to be interested in that stock again is if it crosses back up and proves to hold. It's that pattern that I'm looking for. It's that confirmation that we're back on the right side of the trade, right side of the market. I have no interest at all in trying to pick bottoms or pick tops anymore. And I can prove in my results, if you stop doing it, you're going to remove enough of those losing trades that all of a sudden your win-loss ratio improves. Have you ever thought about that, guys? If you would just remove a couple of those major mistakes that you repeat over and over, you'd suddenly be a profitable trader. If you would give up that habit of trying to rush or pick up bottoms and tops, that's causing you those, those big losing trades. And just settle into very consistent patterns, you're going to have more consistent results in your trading. Okay? So when you look at this pattern over here right now in the diamonds, what does this pattern suggest? This pattern suggests that we have a hockey stick on the ice, the opportunity for a little bit of an up move in the market still. But it certainly does not suggest that we should be buying everything long right now, right? Because if we chase into too many things long here and this rallies, or by the way, doesn't have to rally, goes flat, we can fail here and keep going lower. That pattern proves itself over and over and over. We fell below the 34 moving average, we rally back, that three pushes back up to test the eight, can't get through, we fail. And we continue that process until we finally correct. And it's institutions that make this correction here. It's not retail traders. 
it's their big money that stops that move going lower and starts putting support in the market. Let's let them do their job. And all we have to do is follow when the pattern begins to turn itself back around. Okay? Now these patterns occur in every time frame. Okay? If we look at this chart pattern on a four hour chart can we see the same patterns this is a four hour chart okay the four hour chart the same patterns occur look at the failures here when we cross below, rally back and fail. We cross up. We get all kinds of hopefulness going on in here. Oh my gosh, this is over. Only to find out that we continue this process on down. So when we're in a condition like this on the four hour chart, does this look like a great entry into a trade? Or does this look like a straight up speculation trade? Okay. I agree, George. And that's one of the reasons I harp on this so much and I'm and I'm kind of hard on folks and I say that word speculation. Well, I'm not speculating. Well, okay, what time frame are you trading that that's not a speculation? How is it that you know something more about the market than everyone else does in the market? Okay, so let's go to an hourly chart. Can we find a good price pattern in here yet for a buy signal on the hourly chart? By the way, this great in area is after hours. No, that's not there yet, is it? It's trying. It's trying to improve itself. But you can see those failure patterns continue to exist. We did get that opportunity where we got the three back above the eight. Now the question is, will it hold? Will it hold enough to attack the 34? And if it hits the, gets up to the 34, will it fail at the 34? Just like it did here. That's why it's important that we wait for the pattern to occur. Okay? If we take this on down, I'm gonna jump this all the way down to a 15 minute chart. What do we have here on the 15 minute? Well, the 15 minute we got above the 34, but notice what's happening here. We're crossing back down through it. As of right now, we're not proving that we can hold the 34 as support. Even on the 15 minute. So when you go through these charts like this and you're looking at the diamonds thinking, man, I really, I think the diamonds has to go up here and you cannot prove it in the simple price patterns of moving averages, you'd better step away because what you're trying to do is predict something that even the averages aren't seeing, that the market, the price action of the chart is not producing. You're trying to read something into the chart that's not there. We call that hopium, right? You've been smoking a little bit too much of it for a little bit, a little bit, and you're guessing, trying to pick the bottom. Okay. Now these patterns, I'm showing you this on this chart because it's very descriptive of time. It um, with these three moving averages. And now, uh, the question came up and 
in a right way option. So why these three moving averages? Well, it doesn't matter what moving averages you use. There's no magic about these three moving averages. You just get three moving averages or two moving averages that oppose each other in time frame, and you're going to see these same kind of patterns. It doesn't have to be these specific moving averages. Remember, a moving average is just a calculation of price. That's all it is. There's no magic in them. The magic comes in our understanding of these patterns and reading these patterns. We know when we get probably overextended to a move like this that we're likely going to bounce back. That tells us if we're short up here, it's time to take profits, right? We better be thinking about avoiding the greed, taking profits in that down move. Same thing true here. We're getting overly stretched to the downside. If we look at an upside move, and I go back to, let's say, that daily chart, and we start looking at these up moves, and we start seeing this condition, we got long in this trade, and we get pretty stretched out, well, we better start thinking about taking some profits in the trade, not allowing greed to get in the way, because the chance of a pullback is high. If you guys have been watching my morning videos, I have been almost every day religiously in my morning videos warning about the potential complacency in the market when we had rallied 10% on a rumor of a rate cut and not much of anything else. Still didn't have a trade deal, nothing. We rallied 10%. Look at the amplitude that was created here. We stretched too far, too fast. We got ahead of ourselves. We let emotion get ahead of us here. And then we got into that bad attitude that, well, we can't fall. Complacency, no fear in the market. We got really complacent. That's when we get these shocking moves. And I warned about that in those videos. I said, I don't know when it's going to occur. But if it does occur, it's going to happen like this. Because we'll get that shocking move and all of a sudden every wake, everybody wakes up and they become fearful. And the panic selling begins. Because it was just like they were woken up from a dream. Okay. Now the pullback opportunity trades, the 3-8 trap trades that we talk about, were really born from this. My 3-8 trap trade that you guys have heard me talk about forever and ever and ever is just trying to, rather than chasing the stock after it pops up, waiting for the buy signal to occur, and then trying to chase in, I'm looking for this chart that's pulling back, and then I'm setting up my trade. I'm waiting for the trade to come to me. Because I understand these moving average patterns and I know the power that they can provide. And you can take any chart, any time frame, and find out whether or not you're trying to speculate or if you're actually following a good solid methodology for your trading. Okay, if we take a chart like RH. RH I've mentioned as a possible trade setup. Do you guys see it here? See how possibly we could just repeat the same pattern that occurred here? Stupid thing changed on me. Same pattern that occurred here and here might be occurring here. This isn't rocket science, and it doesn't require any prediction.
Okay. With this amplitude, a, a little bit right in here, a little bit. But what I want you to notice is this has actually stayed relatively consistent. Okay, it may be just a little bit higher here. Okay. So let's take a look at a standard chart that we look at all the time, and that's that T-line chart. Okay, and I'm going to take the price off of the T-line chart. Okay, and in the T-line chart, I've got the blue moving average, the 50-day. I'm going to shut this 500 off for now. The pink is the 200. The black is the 8 exponential. This orange kind of color is the 34. And the yellow is the 20 simple moving average. Okay, and with these moving averages, if I remove price and I look at something like SPY, can you guys see the moving average pattern that could start to be created here? Our price dropped below our 50-day moving average. If I put price on here, you'll see our price is below. It's dragging these moving out these shorter term averages down. So let's assume price does begin to rally. Rice, price works its way up, rallies back up into here. What happens to these shorter term moving averages by the time we get up here? They could be providing price resistance, just like it did here. We move down through, rally back, and all of a sudden we create what they call a moving average squeeze. We get all of these averages bumped, bunched together in one place, creates a price resistance in the chart. Guys, I'm telling you, I made so many mistakes in my early trading because I would see a stock pull back like this and I would see a buy signal and I would buy right here. Completely unaware or not knowing that we have built a level of resistance in there that's really strong. And then just get caught, just get pummeled in the pullback. No, you don't have to consider after hours. See y'all, you don't have to. Okay. We can also see when we start to correct. Here's the rounded bottom breakout in the SPY. Right up here, we could be setting up the blue ice failure and that moving average pattern. We've already failed through the 50. We rally back up to test resistance. Our short-term moving averages come down and possibly provide a major level of resistance in there. And then we eventually fail and move our way back down to the 200-day moving average, the moving average pattern that we just talked about. Okay, Just exactly the opposite of this rounded bottom breakout over here. We move up through price. Our short-term averages come up to provide support right through here. We hold that area as support, and then we start that rally. We start moving up. You guys see that? Does it make sense? Now, David Elliott would throw in a 500-day moving average, and, and I got to tell you, it really does make sense. And there for a long time, TC2000 didn't provide a 500-day moving average. Okay. Well, use the, Mike, use the T-line against any other moving average. I'm using the T-line over here. The pink line is the T-line. I'm just utilizing the three exponential moving average showing me those pullback opportunities to enter the trades. The buy signals will be in here. 
Guarantee it. So it doesn't matter what moving average you use. Rick would tell you that as well. You can see I've got the T line here. Is the T line the 8 exponential moving average? Should it be underneath the 34 exponential moving average? Should it be trying to fail the 50 day moving average? That shouldn't be happening, should it? It's on the wrong side of things. Everyone sound good? Somebody could post sound. Oh, thank you, Walter. Okay, but how many times do we not, not even look at that? We want to see in the chart what we want to see. And we fail to recognize what the chart is actually telling us. Okay. Now, I don't care what time frame you use these on. Or how many moving averages or what you put together to try and find it. A guy by the name of Guppy created what he called the Guppy chart. This is just a whole bunch of moving averages. Can you guys see the patterns here? The patterns where we get back on the right side of the longer term moving averages, those longer terms start to roll over and get in line. And then we get the pull back to the short of the short moving averages and then we expand out. We get too far up here, we pull back, they all coalesce again and we expand out. We pull back, they all the short terms coalesce and we expand out. Now if this chart isn't proof that it really doesn't matter what moving averages you use, I don't know what does. Okay, now look over here. Does this look like a good condition for the market to be in? Notice that the longer term moving averages are starting to squish together. They're starting to compress in place. They're creating a barrier like right in here. Price has moved down through here already. And now we're starting that process to try and rally up and challenge all of these moving averages, all that compression right in this area. That's what brings in the extra selling, the additional selling. Okay? We see it right here. Push down, rally back up, can't get through that compression, back down. Okay? And we'll do that over and over and over in charts. It's, it, it's the most repeatable pattern you'll ever find. So don't get hung up on just one moving average. You know, the T-line is the greatest thing in the world. T-line is great if it's used correctly, if it's read cor correctly. But so is the 3 exponential, so is the 34, so is the 20, so is the 50. If they're read correctly, they're fantastic. If you ignore the patterns that they're, they're showing you, you're going to continue to get poor results in your trading. Okay? So we take this T-line chart and we can start looking at these price patterns differently. We can begin to see where the resistance starts to come into the chart, where we begin to get bearish, or when we start turning back bullish. Take a look at a stock like Travelers. Was it pretty obvious in this chart 
when things started to turn around. This is our 500-day moving average, our 200-day moving average, and our 50-day moving average. Where did it really start to get good again? When all of our shorter-term moving averages finally got on the right side of each other. The 8 got above the 20, the 20 got above the 34, the 34 got above the 50. And everything started to roll back to the upside like it should. Now notice what's happening up here. The opposite. Now let me ask you guys a question. If you're looking for a short trade, is this setting up for a short trade yet? I agree, the chart is bearish, Barry. Is there a short trade set up there? Yeah, no, not yet. This is what I call chasing a trade. We're trying to chase this short. The, the big part of the sell-off has already occurred. Don't chase this short. Wait for that move back up, that compression to occur of all these averages right in here, and wait for that failure pattern that sends us back down. Okay. Coming together for you a little bit. Is this helping you guys? I got to tell you, when I really started to study moving averages like this, it really started to sink in. It, it started to help with my trading. I realized that what I'd been trying to do for so long was is to predict the market. And I don't have to do that. That's the institution's job. They decide when a stock is done going down and they start putting support behind it. I just have to wait for that signal to occur that they've made that decision and then I get to follow these trades. Okay. And we can see these patterns. I looked at Roku today, and I said, I think Roku could be setting up short. Can you guys see if the price is below, right, all of this? Can you guys see how we've developed a moving average squeeze? All of our averages are all wound up right here. And if that price drops below there, it's going to be really hard for it to immediately come right back up. Look at it on the guppy chart. All of our short-term averages have not only compressed, they've flipped. They're upside down. And we're starting to show that trouble, that potential failure, coming into the chart. Now, I can't tell you it's going to fail. I need the price action to show me the failure. All right? But this is a problem. Yes, it is. And that's the only reason I'm not short it, Gwen. Okay. Let's take this a little bit further. Let's go ahead and break this down to a shorter term chart. Let's go to a go to a 4-hour chart. Can you guys see the problem that's occurring here? The shorter time frame we go, we see that problem just getting worse and worse and worse. On the hourly, the 50 is crossing down through the 200. Now, barring the earnings report, this is all kinds of bearish here. It's giving me that breakdown, those signals, those clues that we need to make better decisions in our trades.
using this same chart, would you guys agree this was probably the perfect opportunity to buy? 50 got above the 200. Compression of all the short-term moving averages together. Moving average squeeze. All we have to do is identify those patterns, whatever time frame you use, and wait for the buy signal to be produced. If you see this coming, you place a price alert here and wait for it. I do not scan for moving average crossovers. Moving average crossovers are too late. That means the pop has already occurred, Leslie. By the time the moving, moving averages cross over, it's too late. The price has already moved. Remember, moving averages are always late. They're always delayed. They have to be. Because the price action has to move before the moving average can even be calculated. So the moving average cannot lead you into the trade. What we need to do is think about the moving averages differently. We want to look at that moving average pulling back into. And then we set up our trade here. We wait for the trade to occur. Price is what triggers the trade. The moving average pullback right in here signaled the opportunity. Okay, the same way it did in, if I'm going to go to a daily chart here, the same way it did on the buy signal in here. The same way it did if we look at, um, take a look at Microsoft. Over and over and over how it signaled those entries. We're catching it early when we look for those moving average pullbacks, those squeeze points in the chart where we hold that price support and then we wait for the buy signal to occur. Okay, so don't try to scan for moving average crossovers. Use scans that are trap scans. Scans like the PBO scan that we use in LTA, the 3-8 trap scan that we use in LTA. We're looking for that 3 pulling back toward the 8 exponential moving average, and then we're going to wait for the buy signal to occur. Okay? So if I look at this chart and I put up price, if I can identify this pullback in here as occurring, I don't like this price pattern the way it finished up. But if I can identify the possibility of an entry signal coming here in this trade, all I have to do is place a price alert on the chart. Wait for that to trigger to enter the trade. And that will work on any time frame, any chart. But it's that pullback, it's that compression that sets up the opportunity for the trade. And notice that if I pull this out, if I remove that price again, when you're trying to search for the moving average crossover, you've missed most of these because the moving average didn't cross over. It compressed and then expanded again. Compressed and expanded, compressed and expanded. So we want to look for that compression, that pullback in an upward trend. We want to look for that compression, that pushback up in a downtrend. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's think about it. If you have a three exponential moving average and it's below 
a five inch exponential moving average, is that backwards or, or the way it should be? If the three crosses down below the eight, is that the condition that we're looking for for a long trade? It's backwards. It means problems are occurring here in the chart. So when we see all of the short term moving averages upside down from where they should be, we got a problem. starting to, to develop in that chart. Okay. So we wait for those price patterns to de develop themselves. And like, I keep flipping back and forth here between these charts because it doesn't matter which ones you use. It doesn't matter which ones you prefer. Can you guys see where Microsoft became really good? The 50, the 200, the 20, the 8, the 34, all got lined up right here. And we expanded out. Until that time, we were on the wrong side of the 50-day moving average that whole period. It's where we pulled all of this together and everything turned to the right side where it was supposed to be for an uptrend and then we expand in the move up. If we can begin to take a look at these charts with a more critical eye like that, we can see these patterns over and over and over in the chart. It's not that hard to identify. If you like longer term trades, take this to a weekly. Does it work on the weekly? It's exactly the same. On the weekly, where did Microsoft get really good? Right here, where we bunched all of these together and then we started to get them on the right side of things and we expanded out. Do you guys see how trading can be a whole lot easier if we work with the chart rather than try and predict it or try and guess it or try and fight it? You know how many times during the day I get people to say, well, is this a good trade? And I look at it and I go, I have to think, what, do you, what can you even be looking at here? Everything is wrong with this trade. But it's because we get involved in that wanting to predict that entry, get that, that really quick entry, that we get ourselves in trouble here. If we just let the chart do what it's going to do, because there's nothing else we can do. Okay, we can't, we can't move this chart as retail traders. We can't predict this as retail traders. What we can do is identify when things start to come together and it starts to move in a direction. Okay. Those compression points are where we really get the move. Okay. And those moving average patterns repeat themselves over and over and over. And if we will take the time to identify them, they're not that hard to see. Now, if you look at a chart like, let me go to a daily here. You go to a chart like this. Do you guys see consistency in this chart at all? Or does this kind of look like you took a handful of spaghetti and tossed it against a wall? 
So much of the time, we look at those newsy stocks and this is what they look like. They're an absolute mess. I don't want to trade these stocks. I got no use for them. Because there's no deliberateness to this price action. Now there was back here. Can you see how this price action back here got deliberate? Got consistent? Flowed? That's the chart I want to trade. Those are the easy trades. But when it's doing this kind of stuff in the current price action, I got no use for this chart. I really don't. It's a waste of my time. Now, I could take this chart if I wanted to go to a shorter time frame. I might be able to make something out of it. If I go to an hourly, can I get any consistency in here? Well, an hourly, there would be a pretty good entry right in here. Okay, So you can take these charts to different time frames and try to make something out of them. But what I'm going to suggest is pick a time frame and stick with it. Because the more consistently you read these moving averages, that price action, the better you're going to do as a trader. If you're consistently jumping back and forth to different price times, can you guys see how if you use different time frames, you can actually have contradictory information? We'd make ourselves sick, right? Trying to compare three or four different time frames and those moving averages to what's going on in the chart, we'd make ourselves sick. We couldn't trade anything. Okay. Yeah, Richard, the longer you go in a time frame on, on a chart, the smoother that chart's going to be. Take a look at it on the weekly. Still pretty much a mess. Look at it on the monthly. Well, okay. Still not so great. <laughs> okay. Cool, cool. So if we look for trades that have good, smooth, consistent price action, price action that's moving in a direction, price action where our averages are all lined out, laid out like they're supposed to be, we could remove that 500 in here. That's actually creating some confusion. We can see the rounded bottom breakout pattern clearly. Can we not? Can we see how this, all of a sudden, all of this downtrend and junkiness suddenly smoothed out, the averages got on the right side of themselves, and we expanded out in this beautiful run. That's the good stuff, guys. That's the good stuff. These are the charts that we want to be watching. Now, this BS, BSX is still consolidating here. But notice what's happening in here. We're getting that compression starting to occur. If that price action pops out of here, probably want to know that, right? Isn't that the same kind of compression that occurred right here? Okay. So if we take the time and study these averages, take the time and view these a little bit differently and study these price patterns in these moving averages, charts will begin to make a lot more sense to you. 
okay? And they'll tell you when you've got a chart that you really should just walk away. They'll tell you when you have a chart trending that could be setting up for the next entry into the trade. Right? If we let the chart lead us, it will lead us. Uh, JJ, all you got to do, I mean, get the LTA scanner. Okay? We've already got it set up for the 3.8 scan. We've already got it set up for the PBO opportunity. It's all done for you. You just got to turn it on. Okay, it'll help you find these. And you know, more than that, JJ, if you don't want to spend the money, you know how you do it? You look at charts. You create yourself a watch list of charts that are doing something, and you go through those charts. Stocks that are trending. Look at those charts. What's happening in these charts? What patterns do I see? Where is this trade going? Where can, what can I do with this? It's the work of a trader. And here's the problem with scanning for compression of a whole bunch of moving averages. Think about that. How are you going to write that code? There would be a hundred million different combinations of what what do you mean, what's compression to you? Is it the three compressing to the eight? Is it the eight compressing to the to the thirty-four? The thirty-four compressing to the fifty. What compression do you want? It's a, it's infinite. So the best thing to do is train your eyes to look at the charts. Look for those patterns. Or pick up the LTA scanner and for 97 bucks a month it'll find them for you. I'm serious about that, guys. I mean, think about it. You want to find these trades? 97 bucks. It does all the work for you, and you find these trades. Can you guys honestly tell me you can't make $97 a month if you find the chart like that? It's simple. Just let it bring the trade to you. Okay. Hey, Ed, while you're here, throw, throw in that LTA scanner. Because all of the members, everyone here is a member. They can all get it at 97 a month. I mean, seriously, guys, I honestly don't know what you're waiting for on it. I really don't. Other than you, and, and I've been in that place where I just can't afford it, okay? And I don't want to put any down anybody down for that because, hey, I get that, all right? There's times you just can't afford things, and I get it, all right? But that means you have to put in the extra work. The only way you get around having something great like the LTA scanner doing it for you is to put in the hours, the screen time to identify those charts and those patterns. To do that study, just like I've shown you here, I would spend hours and hours and hours on weekends and nights studying these patterns 
to train my eyes to see them, to identify them, so that I could get those entries and improve my trading. So that's your choice. What is your time worth to you? How much screen time do you want to put in? Or do you want LTA scanner to just find them for you? Okay. LTA scanner will work on daily charts, weekly charts. It'll work on one minute charts. It'll, it works on all of them. Okay. Because remember, it's just a moving average. Every chart has a moving average. All we're looking for is that price pattern to occur. Now, I prefer these three moving averages. For me, this just cleans everything up. It's easy for me to see and it's easy for me to read. Okay, I don't need a whole bunch of information. But I can tell you honestly, I can make money if I never ever see a candlestick pattern trading this chart. I can tell you that I can short. Never look at a candlestick pattern with this chart. And I think in, any of you guys can do that too. There's nothing special about me. I've put in a lot of hours and screen time and work to develop this, but there's nothing special about what I'm doing that you can't do. And I'm showing it to you, I'm giving it to you. So if you wanna take the time to sort through the charts and find the patterns, you got the world by the tail. If you want to save a lot of time, 97 bucks saves a lot of time. Invest in your business with it. So I, I actually didn't intend to say any, even say anything about LTA Scanner, but I'm glad I did. Because, I, I mean, it really is a time saver. It, it's changed the way I trade. And because literally I just wait for LTA Scanner to tell me there's a trade setting up. Then I go mark up the chart, set a price alert, and I wait for the trade. Okay. Yeah, skip a pizza. Skip a pizza a week and you got it paid for. Okay, pizza and Coke and whatever else that comes with it. Depends on where you buy your pizza. <laughs> you can't take your family to McDonald's for 25 bucks anymore. I don't think. I, I, I haven't, it's been so long since I've been to McDonald's, but I think the last time I, I went through and I, um, I was in the line, I literally was in the drive through line and I looked up and I think it said something about the Whopper was like five bucks. And I just pulled out of the lane and said, Okay, if I'm going to spend five bucks, I'm going to go get a good burger. <laughs> so, honestly, guys, it's, it's a great deal. Um, any questions on any of this that I didn't really get or cover? I don't want to hold you guys here too too long tonight. I'm kind of tired. I've got a long day tomorrow since Rick is gone. Um, but hopefully this meant something to you, and hopefully you'll look at charts in a little bit different way. You'll study those price patterns a little bit more and realize that if we just wait for the pattern to occur, we get better results. We don't have to, we don't have to um, anguish over, put all that time and energy and trying to predict into the trade okay so thank you guys i appreciate you being here a ton yes everybody keep rick and um, you know please 
he's struggling a little bit here. Um, I know he's feeling crummy as all get out. And what's worse is they stuck him in the hospital so he feels even crummier. Because <laughs> that's how I would feel. <laughs> so keep him in your thoughts and prayers. We really appreciate that. All right, guys, I want to wish you all the best. Thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate you guys more than you can possibly know. And I, I just hope that tonight was meaningful to you, that you picked up a piece of, of information here that went, that light bulb went on and you say, hey, I can get this here. I This is understandable. I can do this. And then if you take that away from tonight, then tonight was a success and your time was well spent. All right. Thank you guys. Have a great evening. We'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care of yourselves. Have an awesome evening.